Hey guys, it's Ian and Anna from the other side. We are American travel vloggers that have explored Southeast Asia for a total of eight months. In this video, we want to share our new favorite destination. When people think of Malaysia, they usually only think of Kuala Lumpur and the West Peninsula. But today we're going to talk about the lesser known part of Malaysia, called Borneo. Borneo is made up of three countries, Brunei, Indonesia, and Malaysia. But for now, let's just focus on Malaysian Borneo. So without further ado, let's jump in to our top five things to do in Borneo. Number five, Kuching, Sarawak. If you didn't already know this, Malaysians love their food. From an outsider's point of view, you could say that's the most important part of their culture, and we love every second of it. People from all around the world travel to Kuching, Sarawak to try a famous dish called Sarawak Laksa. Get ready for us to try our very first laksa ever. Ever. Think about that. Imagine if it was your first time trying laksa. Even the great Anthony Bourdain deemed laksa as the breakfast of the gods. That's when you know it's gotta be good. Although Kuching is known for its food, you can see some of the most unique architecture and murals that highlight Sarawak's culture. But if you're trying to take a break from the city and maybe burn off some of those calories, the outskirts of Kuching is filled with tons of natural parks. We ended up taking a day trip to Bako National Park and we were able to see silverleaf monkeys and even wild boars digging up crabs on the beach. That is the cutest thing ever. He's digging something up. Maybe crabs. I wonder if they eat crabs. Oh, maybe. Look at them. Oh, I think you got a crab. Number four, Kota Kinabalu. There is a lot to do in Kota Kinabalu. It truly has something for everyone. You can visit Saba's largest mosque and learn about Islam while getting to gear up in hijabs and traditional clothing. Anna! Ian! Wait, let me get you! How do I look? My man had me over here. Look You're at this. You're a girl! That looks nice. good. KK City has awesome night markets. From the Filipino night market to the weekend market, you really can't go wrong. We're looking for food. We're looking for the best price. How many best prices are there? The best price. Are you guys lying? Somebody just came out of nowhere. They go, don't worry, I'll give you the best price. <laughs> <laughs> During the day, you can sunbathe and swim at Tong Jongaru Beach. Here's a little secret from the other side. If you walk all the way down to the beach and swim about 25 meters out, there is an amazing spot to snorkel at where nobody else is and no one really knows about. At night, Tongjongaroo Beach is known for its beautiful sunset. Again, if you walk all the way down the beach, you are sure to beat the crowds that you might run into if you were sitting at Beach One. Probably the best thing to do in KK is to island hop. Off the coast of KK lies five islands, Gaia, Manukan, Sapi, Mamutik, and Sulu. We loved island hopping and it was fairly cheap. It cost each of us around $5 to visit one island. When you're on the islands, you can snorkel of course, and there's also really great spots to relax and take pictures. Jess asked the Chinese woman <laughs> that made Ian take a photo shoot of her. Some lady just started coming up to me and asked me to take Hi. pictures. She wouldn't stop. She's just making him take every picture ever. One of the main reasons people come to KK is to climb Mount Kinabalu, which brings us to our third destination. Number three, Mount Kinabalu and Kinabalu National Park. Mount Kinabalu is 4,095 meters tall and is the highest mountain in all of Southeast Asia. <whistles> That's tall. <laughs> like I said, people come here to climb the mountain. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten the chance to get around to it yet, but we definitely want to do it soon. We took a day trip to Kinabalu National Park and it was one of the most fun days we ever had. We drove up with some local Sabahan friends who showed us the ropes on how to travel the park the right way. Nice to meet you. Good morning. Edward? Yes, yes. Edward? And okay. Uh, Ian? Yes, yes. Aaron yes. Ian. Uh, yeah, it's exciting. <laughs> yeah, no, we're going to have fun today. <laughs> The view you see of the mountain the whole trip up is absolutely breathtaking. We stopped at all the food destinations and main attractions, including Kundasan and Desa Dairy Farms. He's a smart cow. There's udders. Look at its udders. To be quite honest, Kinabalu National Park itself was not nearly as enjoyable as the stops we made along the way. This here is chicken ass. The butt of a chicken. Take the second exit. 
Is that bone? Cartilage? Leaf time. It's a legit fried leaf. <laughs> I know it's a cliche, but let's just say the journey was better than the destination. Our favorite part of the whole trip was trying Sinaloa Baca, which means smoked wild boar in English. This is a must do if you visit the park. There are many places at the bottom of the mountain that serve this dish, but we had ours at 16 Cafe, which has to be the best. There's a link in the description to the location if you're interested in trying the best wild boar ever. Just look at how delicious it is. Ian may dream about laksa, but I dream about wild boar. This is the best meat we've had, I think, ever in Southeast Asia. All right, final words come from my inner Gordon Ramsay. That was bloody delicious. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Cheers, Ian. Yeah, it was nice meeting you. Number two. Semporna. Semporna isn't really your next destination, but it serves as a gateway to some of the world's best dive sites. Instead, there are so many different options right off the coast to choose from. We stayed in a house on stilts in the middle of the sea near Bum Bum Island. We chose ND Divers as our dive company because of their environmental initiatives. Three times a day, they clean up garbage out of the sea and are teaching kids the importance of saving our beautiful waters. We loved ND Divers, but there are many companies you can go through. The key tip here is to choose a dive company that provides trips to Sip It On, as only 120 permits are issued every day, which is really not a lot. Sipidon has been voted the number one dive site in the world and for great reasons. Famous for massive schools of fish, tornadoes of barracuda, hundreds of turtles, and beautiful coral reefs, diving Sipidon in the surrounding islands was one of the craziest activities we have ever done. If you're not a diver though, do not stray away from the Sipidon area. There are so many other options for you. You can island hop, hike up picturesque viewpoints, and snorkel the same spots where we dove. All in all, Sipidon is an underwater paradise, and you don't want to miss out. Number one, Sindakan. First, we want to start off by letting you know that once again, the best adventures are a drive from the city. We suggest you stay in Sindakan and figure out the best tour that fits your itinerary needs. For us, that was a four day, three night tour with river junkies. On the tour, we went to five main stops. Our first destination was Turtle Island. There are many turtle islands in this area, but the one we went to was Salingan Island. There, we saw a mom lay her eggs and watch baby turtles make their way to the sea. So now the ranger will be measuring the boat and uh, the length 91.5 centimeters. Hey, come on. We spent the night on the island and the next day we visited Sepalak Orangutan Rehabilitation Center. Orangutans are an endangered species, so it is extremely important that Malaysia is doing this. Oh, there's an orangutan right there. <laughs> this is so insane. It was like an adrenaline rush. Yeah, they're just climbing everywhere. I did not expect this tour to be like this. Next, we went to our favorite part of the trip, which was the Kinabatanan River. We spent two days and two nights on the river and got very lucky because we saw the big five. Wild pygmy elephants, which are the smallest in the world. Proboscis monkeys, who have been called the weirdest looking animals. Wild orangutans, only seen in Sumatra and Borneo. Crocodiles, and Malaysia's national bird, the hornbill. On the last day of the trip, we went to a massive cave that we have named the cockroach capital of the world. It really did feel like we were in an Indiana Jones movie. It was kind of creepy. This is what is in your house. Like I got them to move. Uh. <laughs> if you end up choosing the same tour we did, we highly, highly suggest the best tour guide in the world, our friend Amaral. We had the most memorable time with him and his team as they made this experience one we will never forget. Anna, give me a whoop whoop! All right, I hope you enjoy that. The reason we made this video is because we really, really love Malaysia and we want more people to come visit. So down in the comments below, everyone hashtag visit Malaysia 2020 and let's try and get more people to come here, baby. If you're interested in traveling Borneo yourself, 
we are coming out with a full ultimate travel guide on how to travel Malaysian Borneo with all the details that you'll need. It should be out on our website by December 2019 and by that time we should also have our very first preset package available just in time for Christmas. Make sure you like this video and subscribe. Also follow us on Instagram. We're going to be all over Southeast Asia. We'll see you in the next one. Yep, yep.